Agency UN Communications Specialist at UNICEF headquarters in New York. But you find yourself, Joe, in Syria at the moment. What are you seeing there? Yeah, indeed. You know, I've spent the last few weeks both in, in Turkey and in Syria. And honestly, you know, we, we've seen so many of these, these reports on the news. And, and until you're here, it is almost impossible to really fathom the scale of destruction. In Antakya over the weekend, I was left speechless and, you know, words of, I meant to use words for a living and I could not process the level of destruction. You know, it's hard to imagine how anyone survived, but we know that hundreds of thousands of people did survive. And so now UNICEF, we're working with the, with the Turkish authorities, we're working with our local partners here in Northwest Syria to reach children and families who are affected, but the needs are absolutely huge. How much worse is it in Syria compared to what you saw in Turkey? Just given the fact that in Idlib, where you are, there are so many internally displaced people who had been fleeing years of war elsewhere in the country, and it's a place that doesn't have the same infrastructure as elsewhere. Indeed, you know, honestly, when I, when I first arrived, that blessing and, and the, that lack of infrastructure in, in Idlib, in Samada, in, in Azaz, where I was previously, in Jindera, is the worst hit, actually meant that for a lot of the families who were in tents, the destruction of the earthquake wasn't as, as catastrophic as it was, say, in Antakya, but thousands of people have still died. And the humanitarian needs here before the earthquakes were absolutely sky high. So the need here is, is, is it's almost beyond words, but we're trying our best to get in safe drinking water to prevent the cholera outbreak, which we know already exists in Northwest Syria from exploding, because that, if that took hold in communities, if that took hold in vulnerable children, that would just be another catastrophe for these people who've already been through so much. Joe, who's driving the relief operations and the clear up? Because of course, again, you have to take note of the politics of Syria and Idlib is not under the control of the Damascus regime. So who's clearing up? Honestly, with, with any kind of natural disaster, the first responders are those within the community. And that's the case here. You know, it is the people who live here, the people who, who this is their homes, you know, the, the White Helmet's an incredible organization doing great work in terms of search and rescue. All of our local partners, we've been working here for the, for the last 12 years since the conflict started through these dedicated partner organizations. But many of them, as is the case in Turkey, you know, many of these families, many of these, these humanitarian workers have their own trauma, their own distress. They may have lost friends or family. They may have elderly parents who've been left homeless. They may have children who they're trying to protect from the chaos around them. And so it's, you know, it's, it's incredibly difficult. But one of the clear things we need, both in Turkey and in Syria, is to be getting kids back into the classroom, back into school as soon as possible, because that provides children with a sense of normalcy, a sense of stability, and allows them to start to rebuild their lives, even within the uncertainty that surrounds them. Joe, thank you so much indeed. Joe English, uh, UNICEF communications specialist, speaking to us from northwestern Syria. Take care.